Uh, you know what? I'll just say this. The grocery store gonna get mad at me if I complain about the carts not being returned? Wait, what? <laughs> like, if I come on the podcast and complain about something or talk about something, yeah. am I supposed to talk about no people, places, or things while I'm here? Honey, you've got a big storm coming. Oh, I'm sorry. Did I start without you? Hello, everyone. How are you today? I hope that you're having a really good day so far. If you are new here, my name is Taylor. This is Star Baby Moonchild, and we come to you from Baltimore City, Maryland. Here on my YouTube channel, I feature content that's generally focused on knitting and spinning. And in today's episode of what I call the Thread to Men podcast, I'm going to sit down and share with you the things that I'm currently working on, a few goals that I have in 2023, and we're going to touch on the subject of a no by year, which was my intention in 2022. That didn't quite go as planned, um, but I do have a few thoughts on that subject. So we will get into that a little bit later. I'm currently wearing a semi self designed top down raglan. It's one of um, the most flattering sweaters in my wardrobe and something that I really, really get a lot of joy wearing. I like the neckline the most and um, I made this using Kate Davies Ducat sweater as like kind of a skeleton shape. Um, I hadn't ever dabbled yet into self-drafting patterns and I had knit her Ducat sweater for a different um, different project I heavily modified. I really love her Ducat. I just ha I can't commit to instructions sometimes. And anyway, I modified the yoke to be as deep as I like mine to fit. And then I kind of uh, went on from there and did lots of things uh, to make it a little extra, a little different. And I'm essentially replicating this sweater that I'm currently wearing with an additional cable motif and that is what I am knitting for the Young Folk Knits bougie sweater knit along. So many of you out there in the world are participating in Casey's uh, fun and exciting knit along journey this winter, Sp spring, winter, I don't know. I think a lot of you have already cast on this past weekend and I think it goes through sometime in March. So you're going to have to go over to Young Folk Knits to get all the details on her knit along, but I do anticipate participating in the bougie sweatshirt cow. And in doing so, I am knitting some of the most scrumptious yarn in my stash, and I am holding it with a silk mohair um, so that it's extra bouge. Anyway, I've knit my swatch. I am using a fingering weight yarn. This is a very farm yarn feel. Um, this is the sweater quantity I picked up at the New York State Sheep and Wool Festival. Um, it is a CVM Rommeldale fleece wool spin. <laughs> and uh, I'm holding it together with a silk mohair by Biche and Bouche. It's the Le Petit Silk Mohair. And I'm holding it with this, which is almost like a perfect pairing of color. The fabric when knit doesn't give a whole lot of variegation. So it doesn't really appear marled, even though I'm holding two strands together. I love a brown and I'm knitting this design to have a motif at the center chest. I haven't drafted exactly what that's going to look like, but I think it's going to be quite nice. That's my plan. I do want to say, Casey, you have won. You have won the best podcast of 2022. The very best knitting podcast here on YouTube has been awarded to Young Folk Knits. I just love her channel. I love, I love the content she creates. It's just so wholesome and good the quality is superior and I just can't say enough good things about her channel. So I'm sure you've seen it. If you haven't yet, you got to go over there next and check her out. Anyway, I did cast on for um, the bougie sweatshirt knit along. I abandoned the first attempt. I actually have it right over here. I just broke it off and pulled it off my needles. It wasn't quite right. Well, you know what it is? 
I'm still incorporating some cable motifs to this, but I do want to keep it simple. I don't want there to be too many cables to this design because I do find that holding two strands together while doing cables can be a little cumbersome and I want to minimize that as much as possible. I want this to be an enjoyable knit, a basic knit, and I want it to fit extra good. I have knit my swatch. She's measuring up to 20 stitches and 28 rows per four inches, which is literally the same gauge I got for the bookkeeper cardigan, which is also knit in a DK weight. I've yet to officially cast on. I will keep you all in touch with that process as I continue it. And of course, in those coming weeks, once it's ready, I will need testers. So if you're interested in testing, um, hold tight. I'll have the pattern ready in the coming weeks. Um, but I, I need to knit it first. And other than that, I have been focusing most of my attention this past week on continuing the shifty cowl or shift cowl, whatever that, whatever it's called. And, um, And here it is. I'm working the very last repeat of that section before I start decreasing. So I'm almost halfway done here. Um, yeah, I hope I have the yardage I need. I think I'm going to introduce a little bit of a extra flat color here. Like I have this small skein. I think I might fold into it because I do like the way that this kind of pops and these colors are starting to fade together so much that you can hardly see the patterning to this fabric. It all kind of blends in together and it's looking a little muddy, but I think it's coming along nicely. I think that this will give me a little extra yardage that I might need if I fold this into progress, progress project somewhere. You might recall, if you've been around here for a while, last year I intended to not buy any yarn, which was a total lie. I I don't know what my motivation was, and if you're thinking about doing a no buy in 2023, I want to ask you why. Because I think that in order to really succeed in that goal, you need to concretely define exactly why. Because I don't know that I knew why, and I think that's why I didn't quite succeed in that goal. Um, one of the first things that I ended up buying for myself that I can recall anyway, I'm sure I'm forgetting something, was a pretty big yarn haul from Stephen and Penelope's yarn shop over in Amsterdam. I just really wanted a lot of loud and bright colors to knit into a Stephen West bubble cardigan. So here's some of those I've had stashed away the last couple months. And um, I did get to knit a couple skeins from my stash, about 200 grams more or less of some Brooklyn Tweed um, loft. Um, and these are some favorite colors of mine I've been hoarding away. I love greens and golds, um, but I did want to keep it with some high contrast pops. Um, I have this dark hunter green and this rich black color to kind of anchor it in a uh, more neutral sort of base for the collar and cuffs. And um, of course the green have the hunter green kind of marries all of those colors together. And then there's this bright orangey reddish pop, which is kind of my thing. I love an orangey red shade. So um, it does make the entire project lean rather Rastafarian, which I don't know why I didn't anticipate. I, I think I didn't imagine it to be, I don't know. I, I, I think it's maybe the black that does it. I think I normally lean towards browns and so nothing really appears quite so, I don't know, radiant as this, but I think the black really 
leans itself to a more like intense color scheme. So, which interestingly is hardly even incorporated into the project. Um, but I've made a huge amount of progress on this and I've abandoned it over the last several weeks. And this is a project I fully intend to finish in 2023. This is a goal of mine. And to be honest with you, I want to finish everything that I've currently cast on um, before the Maryland Sheep and Wool Festival, um, which is in May. And this color combination doesn't really scream springtime to me. I feel like it's a very late summer vibe, but I just want to set a, a time frame on these things. I don't want this still undone before the summertime. I very much want to be wearing this in air conditioning by July. And if I can set a target to finish it in May, I will then have a new sweater to wear to Maryland. And um, it'll be loud enough that you can see me from a mile away. <laughs> so if you are lucky enough to attend one of the biggest wool and fiber festivals here on the East Coast, uh, which is Maryland Sheep and Wool Festival, you'll probably see me wearing this because that's my goal. And other than that, of course, I've been knitting the Stephen West Slip Stravaganza, which I'm so close to finishing. It's kind of a joke. And if I drop a stitch, okay, let me just fix this really quick. Okay. Um, yeah, so I've been working on this for quite a while and I've said again and again, I'm going to prioritize this and I still have not, but I'm thinking that this is another project I really want done before May. And I think I need to really, really get it together and Sure, I'm going to finish the cowl and then the sweater and then this and then that. I just don't want to be drowning in projects and I'm really not the type of knitter to have more than two things going at a time. And right now I have four. So my goal for 2023 is to knit projects with yarn I currently own and then intentionally buy a sweater quantity at each of the festivals I attend. I might not buy another fleece this year. I think I might put my fleece purchases on hold because I haven't been spinning enough to justify more. I'm having the hardest time getting my thoughts together for this video this week. Anyway, if I were to set any goal for myself for the coming year, it would be number one, I am not going to purchase any luxury item, whether it's wool or fleece or yarn or makeup or skincare. I'm going to put a hold on purchases until May. That's it. That's my boundary. I'm not going to buy anything that's not a necessity until May. I've had the hardest time recording this podcast today and I don't know why. I think it's because there's so much that I intended to talk about and I didn't organize my thoughts. I didn't write anything down. I just feel a little overwhelmed right now, just feel all over the place. I think because there's a lot that I would like to be knitting, but I'm not, I don't really know. Do you ever have days like that? I'm sure you do. 2022, I committed to a no buy year and I did fail at that attempt. I purchased multiple sweater quantities. The first one here, the second one, um, was on sale. Brooklyn Tweed was doing a I don't know what it was, some random sale. And I bought eight of these 50 gram skeins of the Caraway colorway in their shelter base. This is a very light woolen spun yarn, nice and lovely. I think I already know a new design that I will execute with this yarn, um, but that's gonna have to wait because I have other priorities. And in addition to those purchases, and of course, the yarn I mentioned buying at New York State Sheep and Wool. I also purchased two half fleeces. I've shown you those in the recent past and I bought quite a lot, all things considered. One thing that I bought most recently that I never showed you, I was a little embarrassed because I haven't been spinning at all. And 
I bought fiber that I intended to spin. And as soon as it arrived, I lost the impulse to want to spin anything. So without the intention of spinning it anytime soon and the fact that I had previously committed to a no buy, I hadn't shown you the fiber that I purchased. But because it's the end of the year and because I might not ever spin it, I thought I'd at least show it to you and give a little shout out to Nest Fiber. You might have heard of them. They have some of the most lovely colors. And this is the Rambouillet base in a colorway that came out, I think in like June. There's this gorgeous, very pale sort of sky blue, a very kind of dingy, almost greenish light gray, a very ballerina kind of millennial pink hue, a bright sort of school bus sunshine yellow, a more deep kind of marigold yellow, a bright and cheerful kind of cotton candy bubblegum pink, and finally a kind of vibrant poppy red color. And these colors just spoke to me so much. You know, I think I was watching a lot of Andrea Mowry's podcast and all of the like bright marled yarns just really, I mean, I wanted, I don't know, I really just wanted something cheerful, something bright. I'm just not exactly sure how to execute a barber pulled yarn. Like, how am I gonna divide these colors? Hmm, I'm not sure. Until I see a project that really jumps out at me, I think I'm just gonna be holding onto this fiber for quite a while. I don't want to waste it and spin the wrong weight. <laughs> um, I'm not sure if I'm going to do long stripes or short stripes or um, how I'm going to divide the colors. I haven't quite figured that out. Uh, but I, I just, yeah, I, I have no clue. I have no clue what I'm doing here. Um, yeah, so uh, yeah, seven ounces no ideas and i'm just happy to own this and this is just one of those things that i'm happy to have without ever doing anything with it because i know one day the motivation is gonna strike and i'll have all that i need to spin one of the most fun and cheerful colorways i could ever imagine and i feel like all of these colors every one of them really speaks to me and i think that they would all marry each other quite well it's just a matter of planning because I can see colors that I would certainly want to see like marled together. Like I would love to see the blue and the red. I would love to see uh, the, the, the pink and the gold, maybe the baby pink and the gold. Um, but I don't know that I want to match like the white and the red, but definitely like the blue and the red. I don't know. They're just endless combinations of colors. <sighs> so... I just, I don't know what to do. I feel a little overwhelmed, but I'm really excited to have this. This is something that I would very much like to keep visible to me and cheer me up through these kind of dark and gray winter months. Maybe the motivation will strike. Other than knitting and spinning, one other goal that I've set for myself annually uh, that I started last year was to skate a challenge. And in 2021, I challenged myself to skate 21 miles. And I accomplished that, I think, on the 31st of December in 2021. And then just yesterday, on the 30th, I skated 22 miles for the year of 2022. And that is a challenge I anticipate continuing year after year. I think once we get to like the 30 mile mark, I might have to reconsider what I'm going to do. Um, but anyway, that was a lot of fun. It took about three hours and it was a little challenging because right now there is a sinkhole that they are working to repair at Lake Montebello where I skate. And 
I had to lose all momentum and stop and turn around on both sides of the lake and just, you know, it just took a lot longer than it had last year. I think I accomplished 21 miles in about two hours and 20 minutes or so, maybe two and a half hours, but it took over three hours to do just 20, 20 or 22 miles. Um, yesterday. So that really took a lot of energy. It wiped me out. I was quite tired and I just zoned out and watched a lot of YouTube. Um, I've been watching a lot of YouTube lately. A couple uh, genres of content that I really enjoy are kind of uh, research-based science on health and nutrition. I've gained an incredible amount of uh, useful knowledge by simply watching the Huberman Lab podcast. It's something I highly, highly recommend to any person living in a body. Um, it's some of the most useful knowledge out there and really inspirational to me in living a healthy lifestyle. And um, I'm listening to one right now all about mitochondrial health and nutrients and the brain. So I will link to that below because I really do feel so strongly about public education in terms of health and nutrition. We don't know enough about ourselves, I think, as human beings. And I try to um, consume as much knowledge, research-based, scientific knowledge on that subject as I can, because it has helped me maintain good health, especially the last couple of years. Do you have any making goals in 2023? I would love to know. Let me know in the comment below or in the live chat what you intend to work on. I personally, I really, really wish to cast on and complete projects from my stash. I'm not going to put any firm boundary on what I should or shouldn't purchase because I know that no matter what, I'm going to buy something and ultimately I want to buy something. I want to support the people that are making yarn, the people that are drafting new patterns, but I also want to use what I have and I really want to make use of some of the gorgeous things already in my possession. And that is it for this week's episode of the Thread to Men podcast. I want to thank you so much for joining me here. If you want to find me on social media, my name is Taylor E. Owen on Ravelry and Instagram. You can find me on TikTok as Taylor Knits. I want to thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for being here. If you're in the live chat, hello and goodbye. <laughs> and I hope you all have a wonderful day, a wonderful week and that you take care.